There are two types of web pages you can create using Aspen's Web Builder, basic and custom ones, and you can choose which one works best for you. Whether you want to create a single page or an entire website, the ability to create your own web pages is here to help you customize your Aspen even more. You may even make your web page your homepage instead of the default browse categories view if you would like to. Like for example, Meadville Public Library. In this video, I will focus on creating a basic web page using Aspen's Web Builder. Basic pages are more straightforward than custom pages, as they're mostly used for adding text, images, and simple links. So they're more commonly used for sections like our history or information and uh, instructional pages. That does not mean that they cannot be more complex. You can certainly customize them and, for example, embed other sections. But usually it is custom pages that are used when you need to manage more complicated layouts or embed different elements without any additional knowledge of HTML. Now let's create a basic web page. First, make sure you can see the Web Builder module in Aspen Administration. If you can't see the module, make sure the Web Builder module is turned on in Modules in Aspen Admin. You also need to ensure that you have necessary permissions to administer basic pages. Head over to Permissions. Select the role you would like to edit and look for a relevant permission. Since we will be administering basic pages, we need to choose one of these settings, either administer all basic pages or administer library basic pages. The difference is all basic pages allows me to administer all basic pages across the consortium and administer library basic pages means I will only have access to the basic pages that are assigned to my home library. Make sure you save your changes and now you're ready to create your basic page. Head back to Web Builder and click on Basic Pages. Here you will see all the basic pages you have previously created that you can sort or filter as needed. We have also included a documentation link that takes you to the Help Center with relevant section. To add a new page, scroll down and click Add New. You will be presented with a form with a few fields to fill. First, give your page a title. Next, enter the URL. There is no need to enter the domain, but you must include the forward slash at the beginning. URL aliases are case sensitive, so remember that when linking to your page. Your complete URL will be your library URL with the appended URL alias. Your page will be technically live as soon as you create it. However, no one will know about it until you directly link to it, either somewhere on Aspen or on your library website. If you are linking to your page within Aspen, all you need to do is enter the URL alias for the link. This way, even if your main catalog URL changes, your links will continue to function. Next, you can enter a teaser description if you would like to. This will be the brief text users will see in their search results if searching within Web Builder pages is enabled. Now we come to the main part, the content editor. The one we have right here is TinyMC, a what you see, what you get type of editor that you might have seen already in different areas of Aspen like placards or system messages. If you don't see this type of editor and you see Markdown instead, which doesn't have as many options as this one, you can update your settings in system variables. System variables can be found in system administration and you can find the ones relating to a text editor by typing in HTML in the search bar. If you select use HTML editor rather than Markdown, this will update all your editors to the rich MCE. You also have an option here to enter the allowable HTML tags. So for users using HTML, it might be a good idea to check here if your tag is included in the list in case your formatting doesn't seem to be working. Please remember to enter tags separated by pipes. Now that you can definitely see the rich text editor, you will see options that you will recognize from other tools you may use daily. In general, this view is quite simple. As you can see, we have this one area here that we'll use to create our basic page, hence the name. So you will be able to format your text, select fonts, sizes, colors, 
positioning. You can also create lists, insert images, tables, or links. When inserting tables, images, or links, you will get an additional pop-up to format them further. For example, table properties will allow you to style your table and adjust spacing. What's great about tables is that they can be turned into buttons and tips just with a little bit of customization. Image upload is very intuitive. You can source it from within Aspen, enter its description, specify its dimension, add additional styling, and of course, upload it from your device as well. There's also a built-in image editor that allows you to crop, adjust brightness, colors, and do some other basic edits. When inserting links, you will see the URL and the text that's hyperlinked. You can also give it a title and choose whether it should open in a new window or not. So these are the basic page contents that we can create within the text editor without any knowledge of HTML at all. But if you would like to, you can also work with the source code. This is where you need to make sure that the HTML tags you're using are allowed in system variables. Here you can add extra formatting using HTML and for example, embed collection spotlights, maps, videos, calendars, or other iframes. I have embedded a YouTube video, one of the webinar series on utilizing the Aspen Web Builder. So in source code, I added an iframe with some additional styling. Editing the source code will also allow you to assign CSS IDs and classes to various elements on your page. And these elements can then be styled with CSS from your theme settings. If you're looking for more information on web builder related CSS, we have included that in our help center as well. A really useful feature of both basic and custom pages is this box right here. Require login to access. This means that I can restrict this page to users who are logged in into Aspen. I can also choose to allow access without logging in while in the library. Additionally, I could also restrict access to this page by specifying a patron type. So for example, I could create a page that is only accessible to library staff. This can also come in handy when you're working on a site. So while it's under construction, you would prefer nobody has access to it other than authorized users. You also need to specify which libraries should have access to this page and select relevant audiences and categories that you can also create in Web Builder. They will help your patrons find relevant content when searching within web resources. Next, select the library or libraries that this page will be associated with and save your changes. That's it, your basic page is now completed. You can see it by clicking view in the options up top or just going straight to the URL, which is the URL alias appended to your library URL. Let's see what it looks like since we have the login restrictions in place. As you can see, your users will be presented with a message that the access to this page is restricted. Then they will be granted access provided they are the right patron type to access it. When you're logged in, you can go straight to edit, change any settings you would like. So we'll take back their login restrictions and allow everyone to access the page. This way, all visitors will be able to view it. To learn more about creating basic pages, visit our help center. You'll find a variety of resources there, including links to Aspen Weekly's webinars, marketing materials, and partner spotlights, where we highlight libraries using various features of Web Builder, including creating websites. If you have any other questions, please reach out and submit a ticket.